be dum bum. Uh, good evening, all. Um, Tom, I think you will need to accept the invite to uh, join me on stage. There we go. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey. L long time no speak. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So um, let's see. I do see some people joining in. I do see some people dropping out here and there. So uh, let's give them a few minutes and then uh, we'll get this proverbial show on the road. So let's see what we have. Hmm. Oh, you guys are actually talking about lasers in the DIY channel. Hmm. Lasers. Yeah, the, those are some uh, some cool tools, but uh, the 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 nice ones, the ones that can cut through MDF and stuff, they're unfortunately not cheap. No, I can imagine. Uh, but if you've got some lower powered ones that could probably well they would then probably be capable of at least cutting through pcb or or not or would you need an a, a don't a, know a, about that yeah or if it's just going to catch fire or something <laughs> i haven't uh tried cutting pcbs with them so hmm. i i wouldn't be able to tell you but uh it might be something nine uh, meter mdf is quite nice Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I think that we're uh, we're about right there yeah. where we can get started. Let's see. We have the companion channel <laughs> ready to go as well. Um, are you ready to go, Tom? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Then I would just say, well, uh, good evening, good morning, good night, good afternoon, depending on where you are and when you are. Uh, watching slash listening to this uh, episode of the Modular Clubhouse, and today we are joined by the um, the man, the myth, the legend, Three Tom. How are you hey. tonight? How's how's life? Uh okay. Tonight is pretty quiet. Actually, it's nice. Uh, Ooh, because of yeah, coincidence. My my son is sleeping over with his grandparents. Oh, nice. So, yeah, the night was very quiet. We we got some takeout, got to watch the news uh, in in peace, <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, it 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 was a pretty relaxing night so far. And then you get an invite uh, to well, be interviewed by uh, by an old chap from the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it still is, but yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I won't take you too long so you can actually enjoy this uh, this, this special night on, on, on your own, of course. Um, well, and as we uh, always... <laughs> it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm having fun. That's And that's the most important thing, right? That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, as, as you know, uh, what we're going to do, Tom, is I'm just going to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to start the actual interview... Uh, we're going to make sure that we can get some um, some hot takes. Uh, I won't make you, your life too uh, too hard. Don't you worry. And then we'll open it up to uh, to to Q and A by um, by the people who have joined us either uh, live on stage or if they paste any sort of questions or comments in the companion channel. So that being right. said, um, I always like to understand a bit of how people came to well how they came in contact with with everything so could you tell me a bit more about how you were brought up from a musical perspective anything special uh within how you were raised uh, any any s specific exposure to music from an early uh from from early on well as, as far as i can remember my dad was al always uh, quite uh, a big fan of music mm -hmm. And uh, during my youth, he, he played a lot of uh, popcorn oldies. So, you know, like uh, Motown music and such. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I didn't really realize that at the time, but that, that did influence me uh, quite a bit. 
But other than just uh, playing music, um, nobody in my family actually, well, playing records, I mean, but mm -hmm. nobody actually played instruments in my family. Okay. So okay. it was only when I was 21, I believe, I, I then had a, a girlfriend who owned a bass guitar and um, yeah, she wasn't really using it yeah and and somehow that that instrument ended up with me but <laughs> when you're starting to play music and bass guitar isn't really that great if you're playing by yourself um well at least it wasn't to me um mm -hmm. yeah a few weeks later uh, i i went to a, a guitar shop and impulse bought a cheap uh, stag uh, stratocaster i believe total nice. piece of crap and I oh, but still, it it's an, it's an instrument, fire. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so I, um, yeah, I, I taught myself a bit of guitar, watching YouTube videos from uh, Justin Guitar. I don't know if he still actually is is doing his thing on YouTube. Justin but, Guitar. Uh, back in the day, yeah. Uh, Justin Guitar, uh, yeah. I mean, not sure. I mean, Doesn't ring a bell. Because now I'm wondering. Well, he actually has a I website. Even, uh, um, learn how to play guitar with Justin yeah, Guitar. Also, yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. He's still uh, he's still alive. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's always nice to see. Let me, he's still let around. Me, me. Yeah. So I even published a few guitar songbooks and stuff like that. Uh, well, it's pretty nice stuff if you really don't know what you're doing and, and you're starting out so mm -hmm. i uh, yeah i spend a lot of time watching his videos nice and yeah eventually because yeah there's well at least for me there was a limit to what i could learn uh over youtube i i yeah enrolled in some kind of classes um mm -hmm. and yeah, so so that that kind of let me down the path of, of eventually owning quite a bunch of guitars while <laughs> not mm -hmm. really being that great uh, at uh, playing them. <laughs> so, but but it was nice, and and I I also went through the phase where I owned a lot of guitar pedals, and and I was actually uh, fiddling. I spent more time fiddling with the guitar pedals than actually playing the guitar, <laughs> which kind of defeats the point, perhaps. And yeah, time went on. Um, I never was especially great at the playing uh, electric guitar or acoustic guitar. I still, uh, still appreciate the instruments quite a lot. So I'm, I'm now sitting in my living room and. There's still about there, there's still an electric guitar hanging on the wall, an acoustic basses, mm -hmm. and a bit uh, on the side here. There's an electric double bass. Oh, well, that's um, nice. Because eventually, so um, yeah, as time went on, uh, at some point I after I, I broke up with that that uh, the, the girlfriend with the bass guitar. Yeah, I decided on the whim to go and see a friend in Colombia who I, I met during uh, an Erasmus exchange uh, during yeah. my studies. And and so as I had regained freedom, I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to Colombia. It's been ages <laughs> since I saw my friend. Yeah. And that was super epic. We, uh, I saw quite a bit of the country with some uh, internal flights and, and stuff like that great uh, for three weeks and uh, during that journey i i also kind of impulsively impulsively decided that uh, you know what uh, i want to learn how to play the piano nice <laughs> not because i <laughs> while traveling yeah i had great ambitions playing the piano but so so that led to me enrolling into the the conservatory of my hometown um which is conservatory is a big word, but that's what it's called. It's it's more like uh, 
adult continued education, higher education. Yeah. Um, it's it's not like the big conservatories in in Antwerp or in in Leuven and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty nice place with uh, pretty nice people. And then there there was a. Um, a jazz program so jazz theory combined with instrument lessons so nice piano in my case and i i um i, I followed uh, the the piano courses for about two years and then uh, decided to switch to to double bass wow that's quite a and, big step then of course yeah so yeah, I, I actually don't remember why I did that. I think because we were jamming with friends. Yeah. And functionally, uh, we had a guitar player. We also had a synth guy. He's also, uh, th these are two of my best friends. Yeah. And uh, the synth guy uh, got me into synthesizers. Uh, it happened somewhere in between there. Uh, so... <laughs> well, to finish the story about the conservatory first, so yeah. uh, somehow, uh, by by luck and chance, I ended up with a lower degree in double bass. So that means I can hold the instrument without embarrassing myself, and that's <laughs> approximately where it ends. Anything more than that is is moi uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um yeah, so that one friend, he he was into Ableton Live. He had a push. Um, was also a bit was also into synthesizers. Yeah, and that eventually led me to buying a secondhand uh, Moog Fatty, a little Fatty, I believe. Mm -hmm. Which I kind of regret not having anymore, because then, uh, yeah, uh, remember the phase I had with buying and selling a ton of guitar pedals yeah um, so i went through a similar thing buying and selling a lot of secondhand synthesizers and yeah and then then somehow i go i, I my my main gripe with a quote uh, regular uh, synthesizers mm -hmm. uh, was that yeah you couldn't change swap out the parts you didn't like it turns out I'm a difficult guy and and <laughs> with these keyboards there's yeah. always some kind of detail that I don't like yeah and and that kind of led me to, to modular uh, eventually and as time went on um, I started to realize they do not call it euro crack for nothing uh, absolutely uh, yes yeah. <laughs> kind of addictive and <laughs> quite expensive yep and um so that led me to diy which actually isn't cheap either but since since yeah i i owned all the tools for uh, doing electronics uh, for me it, it was cheaper than buying assembled modules yeah and started building a lot of kits then at some point i met steve here on facebook and that got the whole tree tom story started yeah and and that was kind of nice because um yeah it, it, it's like with drugs eh? it's better to deal yourself rather than be an addict <laughs> So, oh, so yeah. it, this has evolved to a, a kind of situation where my customers uh, pay for my hobby, which got seriously out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, it's also the um, um, uh, when, when when you get your customer support to support your um, uh, your addictive habits. Um, the one thing I've always heard is that you shouldn't. Uh, partake in your own stash but I'm not quite sure if that is indeed possible with your rack well the 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 thing is that uh, oddly enough um, or perhaps sadly enough is that uh, running tree tom keeps me so busy that I haven't touched my rack in weeks or months even oh so the only time I actually touch my rack is to record videos for tree tom 
Oh, wow. Well, no, wait, scratch that. I will correct that. Uh, today, actually, after work, I, I had a brief moment where I was uh, messing around with the Dotefish PLL module, which is very strange. The PLL? Is that uh, a hundred and ninety six? One hundred and eighty six? Uh, 96. 96. Oh, okay, here we go. The face look loop. Ooh. Yes. Let's see. Very interesting from an engineering perspective, but musically quite weird. So how does that work then? Let me just... Because I I can't say that I've ever looked that, into that. That is a, a long explanation. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'll uh, make sure to read up on that. I'm just going to keep this tab yeah, open. Yeah, or we so can I'll... sidetrack to that later. <laughs> yeah, that's also a good idea, that yeah. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's a kind of, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, called a black hole, but... Uh, yeah, it's another rabbit yeah. hole we can go into. Rabbit hole, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. But then again, of course, uh, you, 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 know, um, you, you you talk to uh, to Steve O'Leary, who is... Um, uh, oh, here... Uh, which is actually who has a profound impact on a lot of um, uh, modular or even Eurorack makers because um, I, I did work with um, with Pete over at CM Modular who also uh, mm -hmm. together with Steve designed the module um, I think in that case it was the VCO's little helper uh, which I covered in a yeah, video and that's also I, uh, a pretty pretty interesting I one <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, it's it's a pretty nice concept. Absolutely, absolutely. So how how was that 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 collaboration between you and Steve? How how did that came to be? You said you met through uh, through Facebook, and and then what happened? Yeah, so he well originally he was looking for somebody to build a DIY kit from uh, another brand, which yeah. was uh, HP, and. Um, yeah, he was also telling me that, um, so it was also kind of MS-20 inspired filter. Yeah. But, uh, well, well, there's a few things to it. And so first of all, I don't know if he had already had it built at uh, the time or not, but um, yeah, he, eventually he ended up getting it built by some somebody else and he wasn't super happy with it because the the controls were mm -hmm. well n not that well tuned let's say yeah and then in in addition to that um yeah the, the steve has a kind of uh limit to to how far he can reach he, yeah he's yeah. a kind of uh physical condition that that limits his his reach yeah and um so he was telling he was telling me like yeah in an ideal world because of how my physique is uh, um, I can only have a small rack and so ideally I'd, I'd have a similar filter but then in 4 HP and, and that mm -hmm. kind of uh, yeah push that sounded like a nice challenge <laughs> and to make it more interesting uh, I was like yeah you know what I'm gonna put two filters in 4 HP and some extra stuff to go with it because yeah <laughs> then it's uh, then it's an even bigger challenge and then so that that got it started then so over the course of a year yeah i uh i developed steve's ms22 uh in between uh working yeah absolutely yeah but uh, did you actually have access to an original ms20 while you were designing it no, no. <laughs> Up until now, I've never heard an original MS-20. So you only had like other uh, recordings to go by and other um, uh, descriptions I or maybe the papers. Or anything. I, oh. I, I looked at a few schematics and yeah. I took, I, I kind of distilled the common denominator from all of them. Mm-hmm. And then started going from there and i didn't hear the filter until it was built great <laughs> uh, i did i did simulate it and i saw that 
in principle, it would work. Um, and then you built it, and what yeah, was your so, first so reaction when, when, once you heard it? I was like, yeah, th this sounds good, but I'm, despite having had several synthesizers at that point, having owned several, mm -hmm. uh, I will not call myself an expert on, on sound or what sounds good, or these are kind of, yeah, these are very subjective things. Eh? Yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. But my, my friend Lauder, who, who got me into synthesizers, he went totally crazy. And <laughs> I went off of his reaction, uh, trusting <laughs> him that uh, it, it was in fact very good. And, awesome. And, yeah, people have confer been confirming this for quite some time now. Great. So just, just to get a bit, bit of an understanding, how many uh, MS twenties, uh, MS twenty twos are are there now in the world? Just a a rough estimate. Uh, rough estimate. I, I know that the serial numbers have surpassed eight hundred now. Wow, <laughs> but that's great. These, that's, these yeah. include PCB mm -hmm. panel sets, DIY kits, um, assembled modules, and not all of them have left the house yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, but, wow, but still yeah the, the, that's that's roughly roughly uh the number we're talking about that is quite uh, that that is quite an impressive amount uh as i'm then assuming that you don't have well 100 ms22s lying around the house of course no the, the, there is the fact that i do have uh still quite a bit pcb uh mm -hmm. all sets in stock at, at some time i just Order the massive amount, and and they're also in the the numbering. Yeah, of um, course, yeah. I actually have a cool picture of of that stack of PCB somewhere on my Instagram. Oh, I'll uh, make sure to uh, have find a look it at that. for you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, perfect. Let me just uh, duh, let me check that. There we go. I, I will help you, Jesper. Here you go. Oh, perfect. Let me make sure that we can uh, share that. Oh, with, with a banana for scale, of course. That's what we need. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Great. I like that. So that is so an impressive stack. So I'm still stack. Uh, not through that stack. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. I think there's still about half of that left. Shall I tell you what my first um, association was when I saw this? Uh, sure. sure. <laughs> when I was in high school, I uh, I flipped burgers at McDonald's, and then you get such mm -hmm. a stack with the well, what they call cheese, which is processed. I'm not even sure what it is, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it passes for cheddar. But that's appro approximately the same color of yellow and the same square approach. So that was my first impression when I was like still focusing on that stack. But still, wow, mm -hmm. that is yeah. impressive. Um, I'm, I'm, I would assume that this stack of PCBs taste nice. Well, I'm not quite sure. I've never <laughs> tasted them. No, no, no. I, I, I also don't think it's that healthy with the the, the uh, epoxy uh, particles and such. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't try this at home, people. Please don't. And, and if you do, uh, please write down beforehand. I um, I absolve Jesper and Tom from any sort of thing make sure you do that before you actually try it um but please don't that's a good thing that's a great thing uh, so then do you, do you, have you have you seen or heard anyone uh using the ms22 live or have you uh gotten any any live recordings from people where you were like okay well and actually they ended up with an ms22 or well i don't know about live but um there's um how to put it um uh, i do know there's a few profess professionals uh out there using uh the ms22 um, great it, it varies a bit uh there's quite a few people uh in a professional context that have a stereo pair mm -hmm. uh, yeah that i matched for them um there's yeah one one known user, for example, is is Bobitz. He, he has an ah, MS22 yeah. uh, in his rack. Nice. 
I, uh, I, uh, to, to be fair, I, I also uh, gifted it to him. Nice. Because I've been following his uh, channel for, for quite some time. Yeah, and he's, he's and, got great uh, content out there yeah. as well, absolutely. Yeah, he, he tells me he's, uh, he's quite happy with it, so. Absolutely, yeah, that's great. That's great. And um, um, on that topic, on when you when you match the um, the stereo pair, uh, is that is that anything uh, else than making sure that they are calibrated the exact same way, or is there more to it? Uh, well, if you stereo match them, mm -hmm. um, I hook two filters up to the the audio analyzer at the same time, and I make sure that the the uh, extreme settings of the knobs and uh, that the the filters have the same uh, setting ah of and, course yeah um of, of course what also could happen there's minor variations in in timbre between filters because it's analog yeah and when i'm sweeping both filters during calibration and then i i see that there's fast differences mm -hmm. because of uh uh, yeah, margin on the components. Uh, yeah, I, I will swap out uh, the filters so that they're they're similar in in sound. Yeah, so, so just to, to allow to, to for the minor differences. The, yeah. Yeah. So now, t to be fair, these are not huge differences, uh, but I'm I'm a bit of a control freak in that regard. So. Well, and it's uh, also your name is on I, the line, of course. I can imagine that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there is, uh, there, there is that honor that you will have to uh, make sure, okay, well, if you do ship them, you want to do it uh, uh, to the best of your abilities, of course. Yeah, so but because that's also part of the whole brand, uh, that it's still mm -hmm. all assembled filters pass through my hands. Yeah. And so everybody is, is buying one from me one-to-one, -one, so th there's a kind of personal connection. And and I do think it's important that no filter uh, leaves my my house that I wouldn't be satisfied with uh, myself. I can imagine. I can imagine. And then of well, and, and on that topic, so have you ever considered going through resellers or? I have been contacted by resellers mm -hmm. for for the so to be clear, there's a distinction between DIY and assembled modules so yeah for diy i uh stopped selling direct myself okay and, and i'm only working with resellers now oh, cool. yeah. um in in that context the margin um kind of allows it and mm -hmm. the assembled modules to be fair if i'd have to sell them through resellers uh, they'd have to be uh, let's say 20 percent more expensive yeah, because and of the uh, the shop's margins that they want to have as well. Yeah, 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 and and considering that uh, I currently still have way more demand than I can deliver, there's no point in in going and and working with uh, resellers. I can imagine. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. And so, what? How how long is the uh, the wait list, so to say, currently? Uh, let me check. I can. Uh... <laughs> can tell you quite for anyone who's listening currently who says well I want to get my hands on an MS-22 they know how long they'll have to wait <laughs> yeah it's it's to be honest it's it's uh, not an answer that will make people happy I'm afraid but currently there are 60 people on my waiting list wow. more than 60 that's a lot and so yeah the current wait time is between uh, three to six months. Phew, that's uh, because, of course, this is still well. It's 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 your um, it's still a hobby for you. You still have a day job, of course, that you uh, that you're working with. You've got a family, of course. Yeah, the, and then you've got this that that totally went yeah, out of control. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, I can if if I put my mind to it, I can pump out quite a bit of, of modules or kits. I'm currently also working on uh, restocking uh, Exploding Shed and Tonk, so that's also why I'm currently not uh, building assembled modules. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm doing those restocks first. Yeah. Um, but but then, yeah, it's, it's time for a break. 
and then when it takes about a month before I, I get tired of, of not building. Yeah. Um, I, I always say, oh, I'm going to take a break of a few months, but I, I just cannot sit still. So <laughs> eventually I end up, uh, it's a, it's a weird balance. I'm, I'm a bit weird in my business practice um, in, in the sense that uh, I'm very consciously uh, keeping this operation small, but mm -hmm. um, uh, so examples of this is the waiting list. I will get yeah. to people when it's their time and, and um, that also kind of attracts the kind of customers who are willing to wait for something that's a bit boutique or bespoke. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is uh, personalized. That also makes uh, things nicer for me, in a way, um, in, in the kind of people you deal with. Uh, so I, I don't think I have any customers which I didn't like, which were not nice. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then something that my resellers will tell you and perhaps slightly curse at me for is that I, I tend to generously overestimate my lead times. So I will say, ah, oh, in three months, I will deliver. And the same thing to my assembled, uh, yeah. to my build to order customers. I always say six to eight weeks. Yeah. Then, um, I overestimate so as to not have stress because of time. Uh, but then eventually I still end up uh, shipping quite a bit faster because I cannot stand that all this work <laughs> is, is still sitting there and then people are waiting for it and I, I finish it sooner anyway. So for my build to order customers, I, I they're usually quite happily surprised. but. For my uh, business to business customers, I, I yeah, well, <laughs> you know, they, there's, they a, there's a there's a it, there's I, a technical I, term for that actually. Under promise, over deliver. Yeah, well, that that but the name for that is it's the Scotty principle. Scotty principle. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Chief Engineer Scotty always did on the USS Enterprise. He always said he added extra time to his estimates. Because then he would always appear to be a wizard uh, when he accomplishes a, t uh, a task, <laughs> and I think it was actually in one of the the the, the movies actually uh, elaborated a bit more on that. But uh, so you can always just refer back. Well, that's the Scotty principle for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna steal that one, Jesper. I, I like that. Yeah, one. please do, please do. It just <laughs> rang a bell, so I had to really, I had to look it up just now. But I'll. Uh, yeah, there are some nice videos or snippets of that uh, that part of the of the, of the movie which you can uh, review on YouTube. Mm -hmm. To to briefly come back to people yeah. who use the MS twenty two, yeah, I'm I'm dropping a channel in uh, in the chat uh, from one of my first customers. He's perhaps not super well known, but um, check out these videos. They're they're super nice and in about. 60 or 70 percent of them the ms22 is is worked in there somewhere great they're they're really nice videos and it's kind of a pity that it's been a while since he uh since he posted one yeah it's been uh, 11 even months. the ones without the ms22 are absolutely excellent i'm gonna give that a uh, a like and a subscribe so i'm gonna make sure that i'll uh, review uh, some of their videos as well yeah it's been the modular cookbook episode yeah, one so to six. Anybody listening? So the channel is called called Kind Stranger, and he he did a, a series of six videos called the modular cookbook, where he's uh, building up batches from scratch, and the the video production is also very very nice. Perfect. And it's it's kind of strange that he he, he doesn't have. Or subscribers because the I think it's excellent. Awesome. Well, now I know what what the rest of my night's going to be. <laughs> Rewatch all of these. That's perfect. Yeah. And now that we're uh, there's another one, but I will remember in a bit. Yeah, no worries, no worries. 
Sports printers. Yeah, wait. Yeah. I think I remember. It's called Modular Etude by Murcia Parker. And he also has quite a lot of videos uh, with the MS-22 in it, but all of them are, are super, uh, super interesting. Uh, so if people don't know what to watch, uh, we'll Murcia's, yeah. uh, I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing that right, but um, he has some, well, all of these videos are quite nice. So if you don't know what to watch on YouTube, uh, definitely would recommend and there's it's quite a lot of them and yeah. uh, nice and short and sweet ones and again the uh the overall aesthetic looks uh looks to be amazing as well mm -hmm. nice i like that perfect so then of course well even though you you, you um you explained a bit about how you wanted to make it well want to limit your reach and you don't want to go overboard with uh, with uh, three ton modular uh, but what would be next for uh, for you as a company are you considering additional module designs or, you, or do you think well i want to make sure that i'm gonna really specialize on the ms22 and really perfect that to a to um, art form? no so there i do have uh another module in the pipe Ooh. Um, yeah, it's just taking me so long because the, there, there's an ever-growing demand of MS-22s and I say, oh, I'm going to take a break and do some more R&D and mm -hmm. then I end up uh, deviating to building MS-22s again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, no, there's, there's um, actually finished the placement on a prototype uh last weekend Ooh. so so i still have to route that but um yeah and then i'm sending that one off for a a, a small test uh production oh great and then uh yeah and then it's bug finding time <laughs> absolutely <laughs> usual, imagine but... yeah and let me just double check if you don't have any pictures of that prototype on instagram no you don't that's um, unfortunate <laughs> but but i will tell you that for people who have looked closely at my um modular um uh, video if you mm -hmm. look closely in the rack there's an early prototype Ooh. living uh in between the other modules ah so that's the um uh... The, the the Easter egg hunt that we can all go on to uh, later as well. <laughs> ah, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And then again, of course, then uh, have you ever considered going full time with a three tom um, at an earlier mm. stage? No, no. I I think I I'm not sure I would like it. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest, the the way it is now, combining. Uh, my, my main job with Tritom on the side. Yeah. It's it's pretty nice. I kind of doubt that. Um, well, well, there's a few factors. Eh? So, financially speaking, um, the, the main gig plus side gig thing. Yeah. Uh, it is a pretty sweet combo uh, in the sense that I, I don't have to live off Tritom. So any kind of income from that uh, either goes to new toys for the business, which is nice, or to uh, extra savings for me personally. Yeah. And, and yeah, th that's a nice, nice situation. I have no obligations with Retom. Um, if, if I wanted to, I'd, I'd finish my order book and I, I close shop. Uh, yeah. Not, not that I would want to do this right now. But you still but, have the freedom. Um, yeah. I still have that freedom. I have little to no obligations to anybody uh, with Triton. And and I like that. I, I can do whatever I want. And, yeah. Um, so that both that creative and financial freedom, that's 
what what adds to the fun for me but if you grow larger and, yeah. and i talk to other manufacturers and i see the kind of things that they have to spend time on uh, mm -hmm. the, the majority of the time is not spent on designing eh? it's 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 uh, spent on uh, well as adam savage would call it drudgery uh, administrative <laughs> stuff sourcing of components uh trying to beat the chinese uh manufacturer that has delivered a faulty batch of pots but you don't have a stick to hit them with yeah uh certifications uh waste management all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff and then then we're not even talking about staff um, yeah yeah so i think the amount of volume i'd have to produce to uh make a similar wage to the one i'm 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 making now and yeah. that, that would require quite a big of big effort and it's not entirely sure that the market would support this um mm -hmm. so honestly i i also like my main job uh, so that's also important right it's yeah a bit, it's a bit <laughs> the best of both worlds at the moment and and i think it's a trap to um how to put this uh, society um uh, kind of pushes for this ideal that to have a successful big business you have to be big you have to be large yeah you have to ha have high volume and and revenue I'm not, mm -hmm. not so sure that that is what what makes me what makes me happy yeah uh for the moment i still I don't know all my customers personally. We've yeah. emailed. I've even emailed with most of them at some point. Um, it's small. It's personal. That kind of makes me happy. And and also the fact that uh, I can do whatever I want, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also, of course, that and that and that is one of the the things I've heard from other. Um, your rack manufacturers where they say okay well we want to keep it we want to keep it small we want to keep it uh special we want to make sure that uh the people that use our instruments as part of their overall instruments have something that they truly feel is well is, is made with love and dedication yeah exactly and that's also why i keep insisting on uh, personalizing modules eh? so everybody who who has a build to order steve's ms22 their name is written on the back next to the serial number yep and um the the label on the box eh, is also personalized it, it has their name printed on it i have a script that from an excel sheet from the batch i'm i'm building that generates these labels prints them so it's it's truly uh yeah it's customized and then then i also hand write a, a little message on the inside of the box when i ship them yep absolutely. i think it's important um it also makes me happy to to do this so and i think that that's oh. probably one of the that's one of the main differences between a lot of the well i, I like to uh like like you like you described yourself where you say okay well we want to have that very specific boutique uh, approach to it and that's of course something that is much appreciated and also accepted within the Eurorack community uh, where you might have in other in other communities they they might say well what we, we want everyone to have a chance to uh, get their hands on it uh, but where in Eurorack you say well okay well there is a there is a waiting list of several months there is uh, a limit to the number of modules that can be created and yeah, I think that's also the the actual charm of the uh, of the community and well the overall approach to it. Mm -hmm. I, I experienced this myself for the first time with the um, I don't uh, think of the name of the company, but the, the guy's called Jason, I believe, in Japan. He me makes uh, the ER 101, 102, 301 orthogonal devices yeah 
Yeah. And uh, I ordered the sequencer from him at some point, and it was just like this. And and I, I did kind of notice that the suspense of waiting for it kind of <laughs> made it super special, which is also not... It, it's out of the ordinary these days, eh, where one day shipping is the norm. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, we've, we've kind of as a society forgotten to be patient for, for good things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's all so it, 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 it ties also back into that whole um, modern uh, need for instant gratification. If you want to listen to a piece of music, you you immediately have all of the well, you have the the world's information in your palm of your hands, and you can immediately consume that if you want. And of course, we all remember the times when you had to wait outside a record store. Uh, waiting to pick up a CD or a or even a uh, uh, piece of vinyl uh, for the people that m might be a bit older, and yeah, that 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 also added to the expense. And the more you anticipate something, the more special it becomes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, <clears throat> so, to, to be completely fair, I'm uh, yeah. I'm an impatient person myself, but <laughs> <laughs> in doing it this way, I, I hope to perhaps redeem myself a little bit. Yeah, well, I think it's the human condition that everyone craves for that, that instant gratification. But when that is not possible or just simply not feasible, then it becomes something that you anticipate. And you, um, I, I do remember that uh, when I was... Well, when I was younger, I, uh, I I still am really into computer hardware and everything that has to do with that. But when you really have to anticipate something, yes, you you were saving up money, you were made you made sure you read everything there is to know about a certain component you were uh, uh, you were longing for, and that waiting and that anticipation made the actual delivery that much sweeter. I would say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, well, that's perfect. That's perfect. But I do have to ask probably the most serious question um, of this interview, and that's about mm -hmm. the logo. Yeah. Okay. And to be fair, I'm not the the biggest Potter hat there is. That's my wife. Um, okay. But I immediately recognised the uh, uh, the Dudley Hallows in that. But is that oh, something no, that... that you mentioned it? Yeah, <laughs> that was totally not my intention. I had to ask. I had to ask, because of course the Dudley Hallows is well, it's it's rotated one eighty degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Well, and the uh, it looks uh, a bit different, but I can bit, see yeah. uh, the similarity. Yeah. Oh, it's it's totally it it's super simple. So it's it's my initials, a T and a V in a circle. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> and um, the, the three colors. So, well, of course, in, in the module there is no colors, but the outsides between the triangle and the circle they yeah. have three different colors, and they kind of uh, symbolize the three disciplines where I have a kind of a foot in the door. Yeah. Um, Originally, the name Tree Tom, I, I came up with that um, in the context of doing a kind of uh, entrepreneuring course yeah. uh, in, in a job where I wasn't uh, super happy. And I kind of came up with this plan to start a one man consulting company. And the, the, the unique selling point was that I, I have some experience in, in three disciplines. So basically, People are getting three toms for the money of one or a bit more. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love that. <laughs> so and... that was the idea behind the name three tom. And, but, and then I, um, I I rolled into my current job where I'm very happy, but the name stuck in the back of my mind. So when I was starting the my, my modular uh, business, Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, the, the, this name has meaning for me, so I'm just going to stick modular behind it and uh, call it a day. Yeah, so if uh, if there ever comes a time when that original plan needs to resurface, we'll get 3Tom Consulting. 
Or engineering. Or engineering. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. Um, the thing sounds so dirty, Jesper. Yeah, it does, <laughs> but that is only because of, well, certain... No, I'm not going to badmouth anyone here. Um, no. um, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, you're in, into consulting, Jesper, so I'm... I know, I know, there. I know. I am, I am, I am, I am guilty of that. I, I, I actually have the name sales in my, in my job title, ooh, so yeah. Ooh. But I've also got engineering in my title, so yeah, that, that balances out a bit as well. Um, <laughs> um, but if we were to go back to that point in time when you first laid hands on that bass guitar from your then uh, girlfriend if you were to give that young Tom a one single piece of advice what would that be? I don't know um... <laughs> I'd say start business sooner mm -hmm. to be honest um at that point in time, I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't mature enough to, to do it properly. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that, uh, that kind of advice would have led anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, that yeah. young Tom still needed to experience life, go to Colombia and do, do all those kind of things as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, yeah were there shortcuts to be taken where there things in my life where i i wasted time hmm. mm -hmm. perhaps i could have gotten out of my phd sooner but well it also had its uh life experiences uh <laughs> to learn from so um, absolutely yeah and I, I don't think I know a single soul who, who, who said, no, I did my PhD right on time and on schedule. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, PhD. It's a piled higher and deeper. And there's, there's many acronyms. Uh, yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, if, if people don't know that comic, uh, that's, that's actually pretty accurate. Uh, oh, yeah. Of, of PhD life. It's been a while since I last had a look at that. Oh, they actually covered Wordle yeah, in the last too. one. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. I like it. <laughs> oh, that I love that. I love that. I love that. So, um, well, I'm always I'm always at the top of the hour, and I still want to open it up to uh, to the uh, to the audience. So, you already know what my last question is going to be for you, Tom, and that is, of course, what would be your question you would like to ask me yeah so i knew you were gonna ask this yeah yeah quite some time ago so i, I thought on this what I'm, I'm really dying to know jesper is i'm a big fan of of uh, how your your pronunciation of english you do this yeah. very well and and i'm wondering where this comes from um that's a good question, actually. Um, on the one hand, it has to do with a lot of my family living in the US and the UK. Um, so from an early from an early age, I had to uh, well do translations for my grandma, those kind of things. Um, that's one thing. And I well, I work in an international environment, so I'm well. English is the well the, the lingua franca nowadays, of course. So that's one thing that also happens. And I spend a lot of time in Dublin um, when was that approximately eight years ago so there was a there were a couple of years where I actually had to spend like 25% of my time in Dublin and that that helps as well <laughs> but great question I, I've Perfect. been to Dublin at some point in time that's that's a is it me or is that a kind of strange environment where where there is barbed wire on churches and, and stuff it is um, it is by far one of the oddest cities I've been in, uh, but also one of the most comfortable ones. And I think that I went to Dublin straight after the um, the financial crisis of two thousand eight to two thousand nine, 
um, which really impacted the Irish economy and Dublin uh, specifically, of course. And what you saw after that is you saw a lot of these multinational um, companies actually, well, getting into uh, Dublin specifically and make that their EMEA or their European headquarters. Uh, for instance, Google has a large presence there, uh, Dell, a lot of these other uh, IT players have. And what they've then done is they've brought in a lot of people from all over Europe. So just like any other city that you might have within Europe where you have people, uh, students from all uh, uh, walks of life, but also from all over the place. But you then also have this tremendous expat um, a community there too. And I think that that really adds to the allure of probably one of the, well, uh, the most classic cities there is. Um, but the, the whole notion of barbed wire on churches, that is, I haven't seen that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, Maybe I only was there for three days. I was there with a friend mm -hmm. of mine to check out um, a college nearby Dublin as a candidate of going there for the Erasmus uh, exchange. Nice, yeah. And two things stuck with me, and these are not the most romantic ones. And, <laughs> and the first one is the barbed wire and, and security cameras on churches. And the second one being on the, um, the it's not a subway, but it's it's kind of tram. The Lewis. And, um, yeah, possibly. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure anymore. So it went to uh, Tala, which is a, a suburb of mm -hmm. Dublin, if I recall, uh, if I recall correctly. And so, as we were, my friend and I, we were sitting on the. Uh, on, on the, the railway there and uh, next to each other and stopped down from where we got on. Mm -hmm. uh, this this very, uh, yeah, decent looking, uh, well, well dressed uh, guy gets on. He's somewhere in his 40s, I guess. Yeah. Really looking very nice in a suit, sits uh, opposite of us. Mm -hmm. Then he reaches to the inside of his pocket and pulls out half a liter of Gordon's. <laughs> <laughs> and he drinks it. <laughs> and so we were both eyeing each other like, oh, didn't see that coming. <laughs> then when he finished his can of Gordon's, so half a liter of Gordon's, put that in the trash can and he took out the second one from the inside of his vest. <laughs> And Gordon's, uh, I, I thought, yeah, I, I initially thought you meant Gordon's gin, but uh, Gordon's, okay, I'm not sure what that know, is. The then. sweet, dark beer. Um, it's mainly nice when you're already drunk. Gordon finest beer, I don't really see. Gordon's finest beer. Yeah, you're not necessarily missing anything there, I think. <laughs> but still, yeah. But that is, of course, yeah. That that is, <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, you, you see that in, in happening in, in Ireland a lot. At least in Dublin, I can't speak on behalf of the rest of, uh, of Ireland, of course. But yeah, I uh, you did see a lot of people uh, drinking on the uh, on the Lewis, yeah. So that was actually right. Uh, and then yeah, yeah we, we ended up in a student flat where there were uh, other Belgian students from our school where we would. We could stay over yeah <laughs> and this was yeah well the stereotype <laughs> of a student place um as it should be oh uh, well <laughs> uh, all in all those were good times um well but i didn't end up going there <laughs> no but still you, you the, 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 well, i'm not even sure which movie it was but they're um Someone said there was a time and place for everything, and that's college. And I think that that is a good one to uh, <laughs> to, to to keep in. Absolutely. Uh, well, with with that, uh, Tom, I'm, I'm dying to open it up to uh, Q and A from the audience. Um, I already see that Clown Clock has uh, their hands raised, so I'm gonna and has been for quite some time. So I'm gonna invite them them on up on stage to see if they have any questions. And let me just have a quick look at the companion channel. 
if there ha if we have any questions we will get get some comments so plan clock already pointed out that uh, synthcube still has four full diy kits left in stock and uh, be positive mentioned um, I love that the MS-22 is limited in number, makes it more special. And I think that that is, well, that's a fair uh, fair assessment, you might say. Perfect. Any other questions, comments, um, please feel free to raise your hands uh, and I'll invite you up on stage. If you are um, unwilling, incapable, or you just don't want to, uh, feel I'm free to just- going to remove my sweater, just a sec. No worries, no worries. Uh, you can also type it in the uh, companion channel, of course. Perfect. Okie dokie. Yeah. Well, we don't really have any questions coming in yet, so uh, we'll see if anyone else has some. In the meantime, we can, of course, also, because you said that you had to go to Tala. Um, in mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is all the way there. So I always had to go and stop at Kyle Moore, which you then passed by as well. But that was, uh, as I said, that's quite some time ago. Um, no, perfect. So, but, but we were talking about beers. So as a proper Belgian, and I can only attest that I'm only a quarter Belgian. So what would be your first recommendation for anyone considering picking up a Belgian beer? Uh, uh, there's lots of good choices, eh? but, um, yeah, I just uh, recommend the the beer from uh, the city nearest to me, which is the uh, Gouden Carolus. The Gouden Carolus. Uh, yes, they that have is always quite a good a recommendation. And any uh, specific um, there, any specific one you want to point out? Oh, they're all good. Um, but I would seriously recommend uh, coming over here and then getting one from the tap. Yeah. Then it's even better. And I think that I went to the um, that restaurant that uh, is, well, I'm not sure if it's part of Gouden Carolus in Mechelen, uh, but mm -hmm. was it the Het Anker, I think? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the brewery has a, has a very good uh, restaurant as well. Yeah, the unfortunate thing was I had to drive back afterwards. Um, that okay. was my main mistake. Yeah, that's there. unfortunate, yeah. So I only had to uh, taste a half of them, but still, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it's um, they also make a, a pretty neat whiskey now. Uh, they do? Based on the, the brewing remains of the, the triple. Mm. So it's quite nice. Distillery, from brewing to distillery. Oh, nice. But is it any good, the actual whiskey itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's very nice. You can actually smell the triple in it. Uh, they, they did a really good job uh, making that one. Because they, they, they hit the ground running. They, they didn't have a ton of experience mm -hmm. uh, doing that. And I believe they, they teamed up with the, the local gin distillery, I believe. Uh, so it was something like that, and they they teamed up and and said like, "Hey, let's make a whiskey out of uh, uh, the the brewing remains of the beer." Oh, and that awesome! Turned out spectacularly well. Yeah, I need to go back to uh, to Mechelen. We uh, are oh, my my. I mean, no, let me know when you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, we actually have an office there, so I'm. I'm there occasionally, but I'll make sure to uh, to let you know when I'm in the in the general area. Perfect. So, let's... so by yeah. the way, yes, we're, yeah. we we haven't uh, talked yet about. Uh, you said you were you still had some questions. Yeah, about the MS yeah, system. perfect. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, no. So I'm still um, I'm still in the uh, let's say the uh, uh, the scripting phase on the uh, the MS22. And the main thing I was struggling with, and it only well, um, <laughs> it only got clear to me uh, today actually, was the whole approach for the actual spread. So why did you and or uh, Steve 
decide to call that spread instead of just what I think would have made things easier for me uh, to say, well, that's that's the uh, the high pass filter. Yeah, in a way, it is. It is the high pass filter, and mm -hmm. until you uh, link the filters, then it becomes the bandwidth. And ah, so, in my yeah. mind, calling it high pass only would also be a misnomer. Uh, also, yeah. caused it its its own kind of confusion. And yeah. Yeah, because when you link it's it, totally it, be it becomes the, the bandwidth. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. Ah. I totally get where you're coming from, Jesper, but uh, <laughs> so that you're was, right. That was you're one right of my main things. But now you know what the, the history is behind it. And, and now I understand, yeah, absolutely. Now it is like that, and uh, I, I don't really feel like changing it. No, I, and you uh, shouldn't. You shouldn't. People do figure it out. <laughs> no absolutely absolutely um that's a good point so that was my main thing that i was struggling with well, well because what i what i typically do and i think that most of us are guilty of this is you get a module in your rack and you think okay well i've, I've, I've skimmed the um uh, the manual i'm gonna leave it at that and i'm just gonna dive right in and you're only gonna pick up the the manual once you get into well if you get into some some kind of trouble or if things don't behave like you ex uh, expect them to behave. But I felt as that the the overall MS-22, uh, and this is all based on me just fiddling around with it for a couple of weeks, is extremely intuitive. I think that the, the implementation of the, uh, what you rightly called the modulation matrix with the inverters and then of course the attenuators on top of that, that makes things really intuitive and then, well, of course, now I know what my main struggle was, and that was the spread. I think that this is by far one of the most interesting filters I've, I've played with. And I've had, well, quite quite a significant number of filters already, even though I'm only doing this for 11 months. But it is something where you can truly go in and create, well, you can create hellish soundscapes with, uh, but you can also just use that as any any other filter there is and anything in between and i think that that's something that i do want to make sure that we uh, get across in the video that i'm uh, that i'm writing so one thing i really liked about the the manual as well is the well the number of different patches that go beyond your simple straightforward this is how you use the filter patches so that's something i do want to compliment you on as well yeah thanks a lot i uh, appreciate it Perfect. Well, we do have a question from Clown Clock, um, who already uh, acquired the, uh, the DIY kit, um, but they ask, how would you rate the build difficulty for the Steve's MS-22 filter? Mm, intermediate, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So the, the actual assembly itself isn't rocket science, because uh, the, the difficult parts, they come pre-mounted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The only slightly, well, unusual thing there is is soldering a screw to the breadboard uh, to the to the PCB, mount the rest of the mechanics on. That was a, a kind of hack I had to uh, come up with to uh, to keep things compact. Um, so the the actual build itself, not very hard, but. What um, some people do not expect is the calibration of the filter, uh, which is a bit more involved. Because uh, there, yeah, there's a few things to be said about that. Um, the way I originally set up this calibration procedure is is very much from my background as an engineer, mm -hmm. and I was hoping to. Well, let people experience how you can kind of abuse your DAW and, and kind of use it as an audio analyzer in a rough sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, by, by putting white noise through a filter, which is in theory, uh, spectrally speaking, flat. Uh, so if you put a spectrum analyzer on mm -hmm. white noise, you should see a flat line. Yeah. 
And then if you put it through a filter, you will see uh, the envelope of the frequency response of the filter. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking, kind of hoping that ah, people are going to think uh, this is interesting. Um, and then it will broaden their views on, on electronics uh, yeah. and all the electronics engineering. But it is also true that there are, so that relies on you having a kind of DAW, a kind of audio interface uh, to use that with. Um, and and I, I kind of made an assumption that most people in the modular scene do. However, mm -hmm. since then I also learned there there are the dollars people and and <laughs> for them it's it's maybe a bit less evident uh, to work with the DAW. And so since then I also uh, expanded the the calibration guide with a a more um, yeah pragmatic approach to to um, tune it with your ears. Um, but but in any case, um, I'm going to link. Uh, so at some point in the past, uh, Exploding Shed did an online uh, build workshop uh, nice. for the MS22, and um, I I actually talked quite some time about the calibration procedure, and uh, they they put that recording online. Oh, that's so, nice. But would you actually recommend it as a first DIY to... build? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, you should build a Befaco kit uh, first, perhaps. Okay. Befaco has a lot of great kits uh, for, for beginners. And um, once you've done something more advanced than a mixer, so say a chopping kinky or, or what else do they have the vco for example yeah um th then you're about ready for the ms22 and um but in any case if people are worried about this i i encourage them to go and read the assembly guide uh beforehand yeah uh, that that should give them uh, quite a clear idea of what's what's coming yeah um, so but yeah well on the other hand if you bought it and if you just follow the instructions really well and be careful mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and take your time of course out, uh, quite well yeah Th that's the thing eh? um, th these kind of builds i would highly advise people not to try and finish it in one night because you get tired and then you start making silly mistakes, which are hard to uh, get down later on. Yeah. And um, and don't yeah. drink and solder. That's also one of the, the tips I received. <laughs> yeah. And if it smells like bacon, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, I knew you were going to quote that. That's... The... <laughs> I think was it Thunk that actually made a T-shirt out of that? I don't know. That's possible. If it smells like. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um. Oh, I see a lot of things here, but now it's. Well, this is this is more general soldering related. Hmm. No, that's uh... also this classic uh, stock image of the um, that one woman holding the soldering iron. Oh, geez, on the, yeah. Uh, end. Yeah, that that was. You must have seen that. Yeah, that is. Um, that's probably one of the worst uh, stock image soldering yeah here well it's it's even auto completing already <laughs> uh, this is of course the big problem with stock images yeah oh don't 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 click everything you see Jesper yeah 
and but there was there was there was more wrong with that oh i even have another one here where it's a uh, where it's a man holding it the wrong way oh wow there are actually well okay perfect that's great <laughs> well these are these are the things that you sometimes can use to uh, spend some hours or spend some time um, we did get a another comment here um, from be positive um, it was one of my first DIY modules that I built it was a bit tricky but the build guide is excellent and there are a couple of YouTube videos to check uh, with as you go through in hindsight I would do a couple of other more simple ones first just to reduce the risk of mistakes and the follow-up question is is it true that the calibration is actually the tricky bit yeah it is and um, also to reassure people a bit and this is not something I advertise very strongly but uh, if, if things should go wrong I, I do offer a, a kind of happy ending service <laughs> so, um, it, it has happened that people send uh, uh, kits back to me which something went wrong and then I uh, well so far I, uh, I've been able to revive all of them so that's always good uh, that's glad to, glad to hear that uh, but I did see that be positive uh, raise their hands so uh, we're actually joined live by be positive hi good evening good morning good night good afternoon how are you hey all right yeah I just uh, got a bit of a uh, I can't quite hear you now. I've got my microphone on. Oh, sorry, but is this much better? Is it, is it any better? Or I don't know. I think it's something to do with my settings. Well, I, I'm all hearing you quite well. Yeah. Oh, uh, you are uh, awesome. Loud, loud, loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah no I, um, it was just really to sort of follow up on the kind of DIY side mm -hmm. of things, and I think it even even though it was quite tricky to do it, and it was the first. Pretty much the first module that I that I attempted to build. Um, I guess the the difficult bit was once I did the calibration, I didn't really know how it compared to like how it actually calibrated to how it should be. And and you might think that's funny because obviously um, I'm looking at the graphics when I was um, uh, kind of. Uh, di dialing in the spread mm -hmm. of the bandwidth um, but because I use slightly different software the um, the kind of the, sh the shapes of the frequencies that it was sweeping were just slightly different now it seems to work absolutely fine and um, it was a really really good process to go through even though it was really hard <laughs> um, yeah so uh it's it it's been amazing to use it's really creative you know the kind of the, the modulation matrix really has almost allowed me to make kind of melodies and and rhythms that never would have happened otherwise because of you know the the two cv inputs and how mm -hmm. you can then manipulate those differently um and even when you crank the resonance up on max, you can start to do some really, really nice things. Um, yeah, so I, I would, uh, I was actually thinking whether whether you would consider, you know, drawing a line, you know, maybe making a thousand and and just stopping, because, you know, they the 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 fact that they are one-off items. Mm -hmm that that's ultimately the the beauty of them and you know almost the more the more that get created and and you talked earlier about being kind of slightly distracted from your other projects that maybe you would move on to and i'd i think it'd be amazing to see you really bring something else something else together hmm. yeah so, so first of all thanks for the huge compliment uh, that makes me very happy um but yeah, I, I have considered drawing a line under it at a thousand. But um, 
be quite fair. Um, currently, as things stand, uh, so MS22 is the motor of the business. And mm -hmm. until there's a, a follow up uh, product, uh, it's a business suicide to stop doing it. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> that would could you become... maybe, maybe you could auction off like the last five? <laughs> to really you know get the get the demand up because actually there's an inverse is a sort of inverse correlation isn't there because the, the fewer thing things are available the more valuable they are yeah i've all i've, I've actually seen uh, people scalping uh, ms 22 selling them uh, higher than what i sell yep. them for <laughs> yeah oh, wow yeah yeah and that's, but... that's definitely the case with some modules that you can't get anymore and you know as soon as you stop making them they get more valuable. Yeah, but then typically so, it's yeah. the scalpers that are going to make money of it, not not necessarily the the modular maker, of course. Mm -hmm. But oh, is that to, is that a bit to too cynical fair, for the me? The amount of yeah. uh, in a way, this it's also kind of publicity, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, we we could crowdsource you to do your next one. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. The, the way the company is, is set up, I, I don't really need funds to bring stuff to market. That, that things are going quite well enough uh, so that I don't have to yeah. uh, ask people to advance me my development right. budget. Um, <laughs> yeah, because that is Help. what crowdsourcing is. Eh? That it's yeah. asking people to advance yeah. you a uh, development budget. Yeah, and, and and then you kind of get obligated, don't you? Yeah, then you get an obligation. Then then I'd be stressed out about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas now, um, th this next module, I'm just uh, developing it whenever I I feel like. Uh, so that also means I'm not rushing things, and I have mm -hmm. plenty of time to meditate on the sense or nonsense of of certain features or, or implementations. Uh, that's also what happened with the MS-22, eh? the, the, yeah. something that wasn't rushed and completely yeah. tuned to what I thought was approximating perfection. And, and, and yeah, I think that also contributes to, the, to it being successful. And then... Do you, are you listening to this new one or are you doing it in the same way you did the MS-22? It's strange. So I tend to measure first and listen later. Um, mm. So uh, this new module, I, I knew what the signal to noise ratio was before I knew what it sounded like. <laughs> huh. um, same thing with that, that Dupfer PLL we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, it's, it's a strange module. Yeah, but I say that from an engineering perspective because I looked at it on the oscilloscope while I was feeding in a benchtop generator and seeing what it does. Uh, but I, I, I haven't heard it so far. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> in a way, very absurd, uh, a, a kind of absurd way to look at it. But it works with the MS-22, so sounds yeah, good to me. <laughs> Maybe I got lucky. Yeah, uh, we we will find out. Eh? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Fingers crossed for you, Tom. Fingers crossed. Yeah, but it it will uh, it will be all right. It's to be honest, it's it's a little bit less complex than uh, Steve's MS twenty two. Um, it will also be a less challenging build. Uh, ah. If if I offer it as a um, DIY like kit, so that will be nice in a way. Um, yeah, it's it's a kind of utility. Yeah, so, but I think it will do its job very well, and and I think people will recognize some of the, the small innovations like there were in 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 Steve's MS twenty two. <laughs> um, so I, I do hope that people will recognize that but uh, also I kind of needed this a module like this to support the development of what's coming next and then so 
it turned out while I was developing that one, that mm -hmm. this little sub circuit is also quite interesting on its own. And since I needed to, to, it to, uh, for the development of the next one, I was like, hmm, maybe I should just uh, turn this into a little module uh, itself. Oh, does that mean there are two? <laughs> yeah, but not not at the same time. <laughs> it will it will come later. So that the, that module uh, is is um, also inspired by somebody I've been talking to, and and already for over a year. Eh? So the, this this is also a kind of slow development story, uh, as MS twenty two or even slower. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th th that one is also quite interesting. That's also something that isn't out there yet or that I haven't seen. So I, I think that that uh, uh, people, I hope that people will find it interesting. I, I would expect they would. Awesome. So he, you heard it here first, folks. Two new uh, treetop modules to come. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well. So <laughs> I, I hope to have some news by Superboot or maybe just after Superboot because I don't want to uh, compete in the, uh, <laughs> the the media storm surrounding yeah. Superboot. I'd rather just <clears throat> do it before or after because like yeah. screaming in a in a storm eh? uh, to, trying to get attention during a super boot so yeah i know that makes sense absolutely so there'll be three times three times yeah <laughs> or even more we'll see we'll see what the future brings hey Perfect. it's nice because uh, my name's tom as well so it's ah, um well there you have been it. very good very good it's chatting to you i'm it's a mark I'm of gonna... quality <laughs> it's awesome um i'm gonna have to go it's, yeah. it's really has been great listening to you and and hearing about it all so thanks for your time yeah uh, thanks. thanks for joining nice Tom. you perfect um we did have some some follow-up questions uh clown clock would it be possible to calibrate the filter in rack if you had a white noise source and a module like the zero scope personally i don't know the zero scope. um yeah, that's a tiny uh, scope by Intelligil, I believe. No, I think it's from uh, it's from Vladimir. Originally by Vladimir. Um, yeah. uh, but but no, no, because you um, you need a kind of spectral analysis to see the shape of the filter. Yeah. And um, an oscilloscope is time-based uh, display, so that that doesn't do the trick. Yeah. Well, that's why but, I like uh, the. Alternatively, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. alternatively, you can tune it uh, by ear, and and I do explain how to do that in the the the, the workshop uh, exploding shed. So if if people are into alternative uh, methods, they're also yeah. in the the calibration guide now and further elaborated on in that uh, one video. And one thing I liked about the, uh, the what, what you uh, describe in the manual is that you're using the um, uh, the M Analyze by uh, by Melda, uh, which is of course a free yeah. plugin that you can use. So you don't even really have to invest that much in software, right? Yeah. Also, the the paid version of that uh, plugin is like fifty euros. The yeah, the absolutely. Analyzer. That one is really great. I I don't usually buy plugins. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah that one is pretty great yeah it is absolutely it's one of the um the modules i use a lot in my um in my videos as well and i will have to ask how you created your images that you uh, did you draw them by hand or yeah that, that's done on uh, an ipad uh, with an apple pencil in good notes Ah, awesome. so that it, it isn't intended for uh, drawing actually it's more a note-taking app yeah but I, I like the aesthetic of uh, how the the hand-drawn images turn out and uh, I export everything from good notes to PDF then into mm -hmm. Inkscape or 
Oh, Affinity Designer. And I uh, go from there. Awesome. I like it. So it's got a great aesthetic, as you said. That's, that's absolutely on point. Um, now we've got some comments from Making Sound Machines. Wow, what kind of discussion have we stumbled into here? I think that that was about uh, stopping production at, at a thousand. Um, I'm all for three Tom making as many MS-22 filters as he wants to make at a fair price until everyone has one. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, course, a fair point. <laughs> Sorry? Communism. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, at least. Uh, MS-22 is for everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's see if we have any closing questions or closing comments from anyone. Um, Otherwise, um, any 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 closing thoughts? Anything we forgot to talk about, Tom? Uh, well, I, I do have a kind of interesting and geeky story that awesome I can tell, but it depends a bit on how interested you are. I am always um, interested in geeky stories. Yeah. I love them. So, I, as I mentioned earlier, so I'm working on the restocking of loading shed and donk so i'm making diy kits yeah and it has been known to happen that in the full diy kits in, in a few of them there's a missing piece because of course uh, everything gets counted by hand and mm -hmm. all of that is prone to human error yeah absolutely and so i i'm very much into uh tooling up my workshop with as many tools that uh, make my kind of boutique manufacturing um, doable in the short amount of time that I have. And one of the things that I got that I'm hugely uh, happy with is a very precise scale, a counting scale to be exact. So um, there are people out there that don't know this, this is this great kind of tool where you can put a container on and uh, zero it out, then yeah. throw in, uh, let's say, four switches, and then you tell the scale, these are four switches. And then you throw in the rest, and the scale tells you exactly how many switches uh, are in your container. Mm -hmm. So th that already saves you a huge amount of time when uh, you're counting stock. But um, the, the point I, I, the story I want to tell is, so this is a very precise scale. So yeah. it, it goes down to a uh, hundred of a gram uh, Great. over three kilos. So, so quite accurate. And I've been meaning to, so in the past, I, the, the, the batches of these DIY kits have gotten bigger. So yeah. I, I don't really want to make the errors anymore. So I finally took the time as I was making these DIY kits to um, set up the statistics of them. So I measured ah. all of the parts in the container uh, in uh, 20 different containers and um, well, 20 uh, copies of the same container to be uh, exact. Yeah, and then um, measured them, uh, calculated the average, calculated standard deviation, and then did the same when they were in the satin paper bag they get uh, shipped in. Yeah, and the cool thing is um, now I have these statistics of over forty kits, and uh, I know that yeah, so the standard deviation is I believe a tenth of a gram slightly less, then you can say uh, this is a standard deviation or show mm -hmm. me the outliers. Yeah, indeed. And, and we tested it and I, I did find uh, in, in 40 kits, five mistakes, I believe. Um, well, you did forget of uh, some of the, uh, some of yeah, the components. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so in, in the same time that I uh, set up the statistics, it, it already immediately proved itself useful. So you automated well, part of that process and, um, well, that uh, in the same time that it would have taken you to review 40 kits, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, and then the the last ten of them, they were the control set. Perfect. Then, um, yeah, it works. It works very nicely. So now I can just put uh, my weight in an Excel sheet, and it will tell me if it's uh, if it's suspect or not. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. It does remind me of a bit of the um, uh, of, of of an XKCD. Um, comic from when was this like years ago um <laughs> but it's in the i put it in the uh in the channel there too mm -hmm. and, and this is of course something that you do see a lot in um well in, in every company of any size where you might say okay well in, in your case you really thought about okay well how do i want to make sure that this is going to work that this is going to pay back in reducing manual labor afterwards so absolutely that's great perfect um, I was I was a bit afraid that you were going to say, well, I've created a, uh, a machine learning model that if I take a picture of a uh, DIY uh, kit bag, it's going to tell me the uh, the chance that there's a, a piece missing, which you can also do. Yeah, the thing is, there's um, you have to be very careful to not over tool. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, uh, to be honest, it's a bit of a pitfall for me, but because um, I like my tools and my toys, mm -hmm. but I'm now getting at the point where I have so many tools that or tools which are just there for fun actually make my life just more complicated. So <laughs> I, I have to be very deliberate about what I add to the workshop. I can imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> there are a few things that really give a great balance. Uh, um, I have a pneumatic depaneler that I'm super crazed about. So I get the same panels as the people in the DIY kits. I also have to cut the PCBs out. Yeah. But the, the hand tool for this is really uh, fatiguing for your hands. And so there is a proper tool for this beyond the... Uh, snippers um but after five pcbs your your hand is hurting like hell or yeah least mine is and i got a little uh pneumatic device for this now yeah and it, it just eats through them like butter uh, oh nice. has made my life so so much easier but then on the other hand um when it snips off it there's still some uh what's it called some stuff left at the cut and you want to smooth that out and so i've been thinking about oh, i should get a belt sander or i should get this kind of tool or that kind of tool but to be honest i think reality is that um i will not gain a mm -hmm. lot of speed only gain complexity by doing that whereas what i uh, do now is just have a, a hand bastard file and two scrapes and it's off so yeah but you do yeah, have those really two, small uh, those really small model making uh belt sanders don't you let me just have a look there uh, yeah yeah the the proxon ones i've been looking at those as well yeah Actually, I, I learned that, uh, didn't learn it in an electronics related context, but in uh, woodworking videos context, because I'm watching a lot of woodworking videos these days. Yeah. Um, that actually there's this kind of relationship that if you have a small workpiece, yeah. you have a big tool and you take the workpiece to the tool. If you have a, a small workpiece, no, wait, yeah. I just said that. So if you have a, a, a big work piece, <laughs> you typically have a small tool and you bring the tool to the to the work piece. Yeah. And and yeah, that's that kind of was. Yeah, I knew that, but not so consciously. They have a great point. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the things. And any particular reason why you're looking into woodworking or? Uh, I'm dreaming of getting a, a CNC machine like a, like a Shapeoko uh, to do stuff to, well, also just to play and experiment with, mm -hmm. but also for uh, production jigs and, and also perhaps for uh, little mechanical parts uh, 
um, in in modules. Um, in an ideal world, perhaps even in wood, uh, Ooh. I'd like to perhaps avoid pushing more plastic in the environment than is truly necessary. But then, on the other hand, there's the safety aspect, and, and mm -hmm. also, uh, yeah, if, if you want something robust, you use tropical hardwood. But then, how eco-friendly is that? Good point. Yeah. It's a difficult question. There's a law of, of conservation of misery applies. Yeah. Well, that's a good point that you point out there. I mean, you say, okay, well, if you do want to work with natural materials, how beneficial will it have actually be for the environment going forward? If you do have to, well, <laughs> transport it all the way from X to Y. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Good point. We'll, we'll see. It's something uh, I, I I have to sleep on still quite a, a few nights. Yeah. So. Um, ah, compostable plastics. I that's also a good point uh, by say. Austin. Yeah. I haven't yeah, really looked into that. I should should look into that. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. Well, I do have to let you go, uh, Tom, because we've been talking for way too long, and I know it's past your uh, your bedtime. Um, and I don't want to be uh, the cause of a another sleep deprived hangover for you. <laughs> yeah, that was an unfortunate series of uh, not going to bed. Uh, yeah, a few nights in succession. Yesterday yeah, I, I actually went to bed uh, at a decent time because uh, I know we'd be having this chat. And <laughs> I didn't want to to be a zombie. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. No, perfect, perfect. Uh, but as I said, Tom, I truly appreciate uh, you making the time in your busy schedule, and especially on this, um, well, on, on on this well special night for you and uh, and and your uh, your better half. Um, any closing thoughts, any closing statements that you say, well, this is something I do want to make sure that I, well, I radiate to the community. <laughs> any pieces of well, advice, uh, wisdoms that you want to instill into all of us? A uh, law of conservation of misery applies to everything. <laughs> Perhaps that's a bit cynical. Uh, no, but it, I think you can interpret no, that in several ways, of course. There's many ways to interpret that. No, perhaps um, what I do would like to state is, and then maybe it's, it's been said many times before, but I, I hope that by repeating it, uh, keep on perpetuating it, and that is that uh, uh, the modular community is really a nice club of people mm -hmm. um, and and all of the people i've met so far have been really nice and and helpful and yeah and that that is also part of what makes me happy running this little business of mine this is dealing with the nice people in, in this particular community and and yeah, it's my hope that it may ever remain this way. And then I, I will do my best in, in also uh, putting forward those values. I love and that. so that also includes you, uh, Jesper. Uh, yeah, I, I do my best. Uh, I do my best. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And as I said, if I'm back in the Mechelen office, I'll, I'm going to drop you a line. We need to make sure to, to meet up. Um, I want yeah. to steal one of your other comments, and that is actually on the on your blind panel, and uh, I think that that is also one of the things that I do want to perpetuate to the rest of the community, and that is be excellent to each other. I love that uh, that comment and that thought. Yeah, we we definitely should because it's yeah dreary enough already, and then. Uh, the world out there in its current state so if we can just be nice to each other uh, that already helps a ton i feel that helps a ton absolutely on that positive note i'd like to uh, thank everyone for joining 
and for listening and to uh, well, actually joining into the conversation as well. Um, whether you're joining live or listening to this recording, uh, thanks a million. For now, I would say, please everyone stay safe, stay healthy, be excellent to each other, and um, hope to see you for my next show, which is gonna be next week. And I'm just gonna check really quickly what we have in store then. Oh no, we don't have a show next week. I, for I totally forgot about that. Um, no, but that You have a day off, Jesper? Well, it's no, it's actually my anniversary. So um, my, me and the, and the missus, we've been together for 16, well, yeah, 16 years or something. And uh, we actually got married two years ago, just before Corona hit. Um, so that was on the 15th. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, so that was on so the 15th. So basically, it's also a show, just a different kind. Absolutely. We might need to bring the kids away as well. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to be posting the um, uh, the rest of the schedule on the Discord server, and please keep an eye on the um, on the social media, uh, well, out outlets that you all know and love, and um, yeah, hope to see you then. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Have a good night, everyone.